Howdy y'all, I'm TJ with Bear Gaming, and these are the 10 things I wish I knew before playing 7 Days to Die, Darkness Falls. If you haven't played an overhaul mod for 7 Days to Die, then I would highly recommend Kane's Darkness Falls as your first. It adds several tools, blocks, and weapons, increases the difficulty, and reworks several of the game's core mechanics. It also adds a bit of story with the Darkness Falls traders. But there are a few things you need to know before starting out, like how to install the mod. There are already several detailed videos on how to install the mod, so I'll just relay a few bits of information. You can find the mod at 7 days mods.com and it is currently working with Alpha 21.2 as of this video's release. At the bottom of the page, you will find the installation instructions and a link to the Azure site with the files. Be sure to check for mod compatibility if you're using any other mods with Darkness Falls. When starting Darkness Falls, be sure EAC is disabled. Getting started. If everything works properly, you will see this screen at startup. Be sure to start a new world when playing Darkness Falls. To get the full benefits of the overhaul mod, select one of the Darkness Falls worlds. This is the only way to access special resources and features associated with Darkness Falls, including the Darkness Falls traders. You may notice PEP and no PEP. The PEP stands for POI Expansion Pack. This is a set of POIs or places of interest modified by the creator and added to the game. I would recommend the PEP version if your computer is above the minimum specification for 7 Days to Die to increase the variety and creativity of locations to explore. How about settings? Well, I suggest starting with the default settings and adjusting as you play the first time. Darkness Falls is harder than the base game, especially for the 7 Day Hordes. Setting it too difficult may prove to be frustrating. There are also a few options that will tax your computer if set too high, like zombie and animal spawn limits. Darkness Falls also has some specific options, such as max zombie count, max animal count, claim amount, so how many claim blocks you can have, settings for the screamer hordes, as well as how frequent the wandering hordes appear and how large they are. I tend to start at normal settings and start to make it harder the further I progress. Select your class. After you arrive in your new Darkness Falls world, your first decision will be to will set the tone for the game. You must pick a class to start, and each class focuses on different aspects of the game. They consist of farmer, hunter, laborer, mechanic, scientist, security, and survivalist. Each one has a short quest line that gives the player skill points, attributes, or items related to the class. Farmer, hunter, and security are the easiest quest lines. Scientist and Mechanic are the hardest to complete until the player is established. When starting out, I recommend Farmer or Hunter just to ensure a steady food supply. The other classes become more useful as you progress in the game and can always be unlocked later with skill notes. Food and Water The biggest struggle you'll face at first is hunger and thirst. Nearly all canned food has the possibility of giving the player food poisoning and water sources can also give dysentery. These can be fatal early game as their debuffs are devastating. Be sure to cook any canned foods in a campfire with a clay bowl to remove this risk. Same goes for murky water. Water is good, but juice and tea are better. They provide more hydration, and treat minor illnesses like dysentery, and the better ones can increase your wellness. And wellness is how you raise your survivor's health and stamina stats. Starting out, you only have a few options for food, so always be on the lookout for fruit like the apple and orange trees. and wild-grown plants like tomatoes, carrots, and potatoes in the forest, corn and wheat, rice in the desert, and blueberries in the snow biomes. There are also several animals to harvest for food. Chicken and rabbits are everywhere. Wolves are plentiful in the forest, and a well-placed sneaking headshot can easily deal with one at normal difficulty. Boars can be found in pinned farm areas, and the hornets can be harvested for honey. After you are established, be sure to invest in some high quality meals to increase your max health and stamina. You're going to need it. Shelter On day one, you want to find a strong building to take over before the crickets start chirping. Look for cobblestone or concrete if possible, but something not too large otherwise tough zombies will be waiting. You want at least two stories high with as few entries as possible. Night time in Darkness Falls is not to be taken lightly. The zombies start to run and they'll spawn at higher tiers than in the day. You can also expect to see ferals and radiated zombies at night within the first week of the game. 
You need to have a starting base that is able to handle them if they see you and try to enter. Double up and reinforce doors and windows on the first floors. There are also frequent wandering hordes and they will tear through a building in mass to get to you. They also spawn with higher tier zombies earlier than expected. Be ready by nightfall and have a hammer ready in the morning. The Traders and Darkness Falls characters The Traders and Darkness Falls are a bit different than the normal game. Their inventories are very limited at the start of the game and everything is expensive. They no longer have protection and their compounds can be destroyed so be sure to deal with any threats that come their way. You can build a base within the Traders area, but the risk of attacking zombies must be understood. To improve their inventories you must invest skill points into the Charismatic Nature attribute found in the Survivalist class. They also offer more than just the standard quests and items. Once you build a relationship with them via questing, they can teach you skills, even mastery for a class, at a hefty fee. Approximately 100,000 dukes. The more quests you complete, regardless of tier level, the higher their faction goes. Be sure to bring your dukes as they will only offer training and mastery if you have enough to cover the cost. In every trader compound, you'll find a White River Scout. This scout will offer medical items for sale and jobs. These jobs are how you progress into the Darkness Falls storyline. These missions are head to a rally point and then defeat a set of enemies. Starting out, they are normal and progressively get harder as you increase job tier. Once you hit tier 3, the scout will offer another kind of job, open trade routes. This will guide you to Razor, the first Darkness Falls trader. Enough jobs with Razor and he sends you on into the story. Be prepared. These Darkness Falls traders also sell items relating to the overall theme. But be sure to hold E to access their inventory, otherwise they just show jobs. The Zombies The Zombies in Darkness Falls start the same as the base game, but there are far more variety and difficulty. First is the normal, then feral with yellow eyes, radiated glow green, tough glow purple and have even more health, and then the demons glow orange and empowered demons glowing red. To avoid any spoilers, I'll only mention there are a few boss zombies that have massive amounts of health and armor. These demons have a special look and will be hard to miss. When you get to demons, you will need weapons to be able to counteract their regeneration, like the coil guns, laser weapons, and various legendary weapons found in the game. As long as you stay clear of the wasteland and don't head too far into the storyline, you should acquire the right weapons to scale with the zombies you encounter. Any place that looks advanced or in any of the park biomes, like snow and desert, you may encounter these higher level zombies, so remember, it's not fleeing in terror, it's called a tactical retreat. Transportation. The maps in Darkness Falls are well designed and the traders are laid out to prevent them from being clumped together, so transportation is a must. Not just for getting to the traders, but the zombies at night tend to get harder and start to run. Get stuck far from base near nightfall and you will need to get moving fast. Get the bicycle quickly, either from the trader's tier 1 quest line or from unlocking it via attributes. Using the Grease Monkey attribute, you can unlock more vehicles like the minibike, motorcycle, and other rides. Darkness Falls has several options including various cars, trucks, helicopters, and even airplanes. But there's one important thing to know. On Blood Moon, anything other than the bicycle will not work. Skill Notes one of the most important items in Darkness Falls are the skill notes. It may not seem like much, but they are used to unlock classes and even mastery. They are hard to come by at first. You may miss the best way to get them. Usually a player will reread schematics to get a little bit of XP, but schematics that are known can be scrapped into bundles of skill notes. The faster you can get skill notes, the faster you can unlock the classes and gain access to, to several important skills, tools, weapons, and boosts. Do not sell or reread already known schematics and skill books, scrap them. Also, find or craft a writing desk as fast as possible. Using it will lower the required amount of skill notes to create the class books and unlock them as fast as you can. Lock picking and crowbars. Another change from the base game in Darkness Falls is lock picking. Similar to how lock picking works in other games, notably the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, you can use lock picks to open locked containers. 
In the base game, it's about probability if you'll be able to open a chest. But in Darkness Falls, the player uses a pick and positions it into a specific location to allow the lock to be turned. Trying to turn the lock while the pick is in the wrong location will cause the pick to shake and eventually break. You can use a quick try to show if you are in the correct position, and with practice this method works well. If you are in a hurry, you can use a crowbar. The crowbar does massive amounts of damage to locked containers and doors. This can make quick work of even a hardened chest. It also has, in the place of a power attack, a one-hit open feature for locked chest. Be ready. This generates a massive amount of heat and takes 100 stamina. Screamers will start to appear after one or two quick opens. Not exactly related to lock picking, but important to know when just starting out. As you progress, you will start to find colored key cards. These will be blue, green, and red. So save them and take them with you as they are critical to open coded doors in the Darkness Falls POIs. Eventually, you'll even get the Portal Power Source, which is a unique type of keycard to open very special locked doors. These are just a few of the things I wish I knew before starting Darkness Falls. If there's anything else you want to know, please leave a comment below. Be sure to check out my last Darkness Falls series here, and subscribe for more 7 Days to Die videos. If you already have, thanks, I appreciate it. Until next time, laters.